what we are looking at here is a series of general websites I would like to uh, show you first before we go into the Amsterdam archives. And the reason is that these general websites, although they have um, um, well uh, data about millions of uh, non-Jewish Dutch, Dutch people, they also have data about Jews, Ashkenazic Jews, Sephardic Jews. <clears throat> we was we, or who was who was who, is a simple uh, website. You can choose for um, a simple search or for advanced search. And um, let's take, for example, a, a family that's well known all over the world, the family Pardo. And uh, let's look for David Pardo. Part of the family, because they, they, I think they started off in Salonica, then went also oh, Eastern Sephardic, then went to uh, Venice, then to Amsterdam, and then some on to London and other places. And, and we should add that all of the, the, the links we'll put in our newsletter, so no need to uh, write them down. We, who was who presents uh, the results in the form of a list. If there are more results, then 15, there will, there will be more pages. And um, everywhere that you see uh, a camera, there is a scan. You can uh, sort this database by date or by given name or last name. And we are going to look at a one of the results, clicking on it opens up more information and uh, clicking on go to the source takes you to the results. It's now opening up. Eventually. It takes you to, to the Amsterdam city archives. And what you see here is that David Pardo married Rachel Samken, but it should read Sanchez. Do you and see here to the, yeah. yes. <laughs> to the right, we see the marriage ban of this couple. And the marriage ban is a very uh, peculiar Amsterdam uh, uh, sort of deed. Uh, all the Jews were required to marry before civil authorities and because the Amsterdam government liked to keep a tap on these people and Jews were periodically reminded that they had to do this because they tended to uh, to skip the rules now and then. What we see here is David Pardo uh, here to the end. The handwriting can be difficult, but here is very clearly David, and on the next line is Pardo, and he comes from Silonica, which is, uh, I believe, somewhere near uh, Constantinople. Salonica, also Thessaloniki in Greek. Ah, uh, of course, Salonica. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it tells you also how old these uh, people are. Uh, Rachel Sanchez was 29 years and she is assisted by her father, uh, whose name is Francesco Sanchez. At the bottom of this marriage band, you find um, the signatures and it's um, uh, Remarkable how many women, uh, Portuguese women in Amsterdam, were able to sign. I'm going to close this page. So that's who is who was who, and has about uh, 200 million data about about individual persons based on 80 million documents. It's mostly 19th and 20th century, but it's a good place to start your research. If, if, Another I one. Jump in, if I could just jump in there with the, uh, the civil bans, 
they're incredibly useful because we saw that David Pardo was born in uh, Salonika. Um, it's also said that his wife was born in Mora, which is a town in Portugal. And as more and more data gets uh, digitized, hopefully we can then check the church records uh, in that town and indeed the Inquisition records for uh, a family of that name who came from that city and then we can trace back further. And, and this is probably the, uh, the best way to trace back through the uh, records back into the Inquisition times. Thank you, David. The next site I wish to present is Open Archives, which is uh, a lot of the same, but um, on this site, you don't have a direct connection to documents. It's a two-step uh, site. First, you get the results, and then um, if you click on a result, you can click through to the archive that's keeping the document. It has more documents than um, than who was who, 290 million individual entries. Uh, but that's because they also uh, take into account archival re uh, results. The next site I wish to take you to are those of the National Archives of the Netherlands. And what you find here is um, government records, uh, re records from uh, churches, also synagogues, individual persons, families, and uh, sports organizations. And it's also uh, overall, so it's not only Jews you find in here, but uh, also the ordinary Dutch people. And, and these, these are the National Archives in, in The Hague, so they're obviously different from the Amsterdam Archives. Yes. They also have a simple search. David Pardo. Look, I'm looking for... And... <clears throat> now you are not presented with one list of results. Um, there are several categories here which you can see presented in these tabs. Archives have uh, eight results and indexes, in, indexing has uh, four results. And if I click through, you can see that uh, here are results from Suriname and the Netherlands Antilles. And unfortunately, the family Pardo possessed slaves in Suriname. Um, probably these are records that record the, the freeing of the slaves called emancipation in 1863. What the National Archives also have is its colonial Dutch archives. And uh, one of these are the colonial archives of uh, the colonies Suriname. And one part of that big archive are uh, the archives of the Portuguese Jewish community in uh, Suriname. And as you can see here in the tab scans, there are nearly 200,000 scans available. Uh, why are they here? Well, uh, Holland gave its Suriname archives back to Suriname and only kept a digital copy. It's uh, free to, uh, to search, there are no costs involved. And what you see here is typical for Dutch archives. Uh, you see the structure of the archive and you see pluses before each part of the archives. Tom, Tom could I just quickly uh, jump in and could you, there's a few people trying to get into the room um, which uh, yes. we, we currently control. Uh, and just for people who don't know, Suriname is a Dutch colony on the South American mainland uh, facing the Caribbean. And of course, another important Dutch colony was the island of, uh, of Curaçao. So, so yes, um, I'm going to show you one important uh, 
part of this archive. And it's the, the archive from the Ghazan. And in here, you will find birth, circumcision, death, and marriage records. And the marriage records are on top. Clicking on the plus gets you deeper into the archives and you get a list of books with Ketterblad. And it goes back to 1702. There's one little gap. And clicking on one of these uh, results will get you to uh, this particular book. Again, here you see scans, and this takes you directly to the Ketterbot. For, for, for people who, who, who don't know, a Ketterbot is a, a Jewish uh, marriage certificate. Uh, it is written in uh, Aramaic and uh, Hebrew. Yes. Um, I'll click on one ketuba. Then we can take a closer look at it if it opens up. Sometimes this is slow to open. Now you get to see the, the actual image of Ketterbot by using the scroll function on your mouse. You can enlarge or make it smaller. And you can uh, navigate by dragging the picture up. And you can get to the next page here below, previous or next. You can here fill in a number and can go to a particular page. These uh, Ketterbot have been indexed in the past, some 30 years ago. And um, we'll put a link to that um, index in our newsletter. I'm going to leave the Suriname archives now and we go to Archivot, which is not a general website, but is uh, the starting point for your research into Portuguese and Ashkenazic Jews. Um, this website was maintained by a group of volunteers in Israel. And recently they decided that they could not find enough volunteers to keep it going. So they archived it and with the result that some search possibilities that were there in the past uh, are now uh, no longer available. Um, I'm going to take you to one particular part of this uh, uh, website. These are the records of the cemetery Bet Chaim in outer Kerk and Amstel. I, 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 think it's, I think it's worth saying that um, this is a complete treasure trove for Ashkenazi um, genealogy in the Netherlands. There's, there's, there is less on, on Pardo, but it's very useful. Shall we, shall we look at Pardo again? Yes. This opens up a list of persons with um, a first name, with a last name that begins with a P. It uh, takes some time to know, open up, and you can start to research by um, when uh, all these columns uh, stop moving. It's simple. Search will give you all the parts that are in here. Yeah, but you have to keep in mind it's on the first letter of the alphabet from uh, on my name and a lot of these Portuguese Jews had double names. So if you seek a Baruch Pardo, you will, have, you will have to look under the uh, B. Now we have a list of all Pardos. And here is something that unfortunately I cannot let you see because Zoom doesn't allow that. If I would click on file, you'd would see the burial card that was made up by uh, the personnel at Bet Chaim. They made 27,000 cards or something like that. 
And these cards are very interesting because they mention the wife or the husband of the person. They mention children. They mention uh, the date of marriage and when somebody died. And sometimes there is a reference to literature. So this is an, also a nice starting point for your uh, research. I'm going to let uh, some people in. Uh, okay. How did I do that again? <laughs> Difficult yet. <laughs> Admit, yes, it was slow to come. Okay. There are two other databases here that are important for. Uh, for uh, Sephardic genealogy. Uh, one of them is Portuguese marriages, which is a database to, get, to the Ketabot of the Amsterdam archives. Again, it's a list that's um, uh, on the first letter of the last name. It works a little bit different here, but here you can search by using uh, control F and what was it again on a, on a Mac, David? Uh, I think it's Apple. Apple. Uh, Apple. I think. But you can search here for Pardo. And you can scroll through the list. Again, if you click on the name, you, can, uh, you get extra information. And it's important to you start your research and to get a bot here because here you find the names of the couple and uh, the date. And you have to use the date later on in the Amsterdam archives. So keep that in mind as we proceed to the next stage. Uh, what is the time range of uh, the, the record? It's, uh, it's from 1675 until beginning of the 20th century. Okay. So that's uh, impressive, but not as impressive as Livorno, which goes back to, to 1620. But it's mm. a little bit better than London, which goes back to 1690. Okay. okay. Um, do you know if some, uh, some uh, people from Amsterdam went to Livorno in uh, Italy? Yes. Uh, Dan, Daniel, could you but, save your, 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 your questions, please, for the end? Because we're, we're not oh, okay, okay. Sure they're going to give us uh, time. I'm afraid everyone okay. else is muted by, by, by you. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, mute. Oh, okay. Yes. Then we go on to... Um, the city archives of Amsterdam. And this is their homepage. And you get here by simply typing in the address uh, archive.amsterdam. We also will put the link into our newsletter and you can click in, on it and you will be getting to the first page of this very interesting website. There are millions of documents here. There are uh, a lot of indexed archives here. And uh, the search is uh, very simple, but you need some guidance to get there. The first thing you can do is zoeken door alles, which means search through everything. And this, if you have a name like Cohen will you get you way too many results. But it could be interesting for less, uh, less usual names. Again, you'll try Pardo. And the Amsterdam City Archives will present us with a list of hits. 
And now you see that it's a bit similar like uh, the National Archives, and that is because the same system is underlying it. Three hits in the inventar inventarism or archives, and no less than 738 results in the indexing. Uh, inventarism refers to the archives, of which there are 3,300 government archives, archives of churches, synagogues, families, persons, courts, you name it. And indexes are indexes to parts of these archives. And when I click on it, you will get all the pardos in, in the list. 25 per page. It takes uh, some time to load because uh, apparently a lot of hits. <clears throat> and again, so when when it does yeah, load, it, it's it's always clever to put them by date order, which I'm afraid will uh, cause a further delay. And you can sort this list by first name, last name, the role, the date, and if I click on date. You will get to see, for instance, David Pardo, which is the same David Pardo that we looked at just now. Only this time you see it uh, in a direct way. Clicking on it gets you to the image, which we already did. So I'm going to show you now how to search in the indexes. What you see here is, is the search box Zoeken, which means search, and this is extended search. Uh, search. Okay, this meeting has now un unlimited minutes, uh, David. Okay, <laughs> so I'll flash it on my screen, okay. so we, we can uh, take it a bit more relaxed. Yeah. Uh, I hope. Well, we can have some questions. We can have some questions at the end. Extended search first gives you a list of fields. You can search for Pardo again. If you're not sure of the spelling, then add the tilde, and you can put the tilde before the name, after the name, doesn't matter. There are other white cards, but this one is, is the, the, the easiest one. Uh, David. Now, I'm not going to search directly because I want to show you this. And this is, uh, they, these are parts of archives that have been indexed. And uh, for example, we see here on the trial register, which means that you will search through the marriage bands, which we have already looked at. And then if I click the box notarial archives, immediately you will not be searching through everything, but only here. But you can click more, uh, more things that you might be interested in and then click search. And again, we will have a list of results. Ah. This is one of the drawbacks of the Amsterdam archives. <laughs> um, it remembers your last search. They are working on that, but um, it's good that you see that sometimes things can get uh, can go wrong here. I click on inventories first to switch, and then I click on indexes again, and. And we start by search. Um, so for people from English speaking countries where we don't really use notaries uh, very much, we sort of vaguely remember them. Uh, a notary is a sort of private individual who is sort of licensed by the government to confirm uh, contracts. So for example, in, in, in England, if you turn contracts, it would just be between uh, two parties. 
Whereas uh, in actually in Brazil today, but in, in uh, Amsterdam then, you had to go to a notary to have it stamped to uh, make it official. And the Amsterdam notarial archives have uh, 20 million pages, which are slowly being uh, both scanned and uh, indexed. And that's going to be a, a complete treasure trove uh, for, for genealogists and uh, historians too. Yes, like David said, there will be uh, uh, lots of documents uploaded to this site in the future. There are 780 volunteers working on indexing them. And if it's ready, it will present a picture of, uh, of the um, population of Amsterdam in all kinds of activities. Um, you know, transport deeds, deeds about real estate, uh, prenuptial agreements, uh, last wills, and there's a lot uh, to enjoy here. And, and, and of course, this, this is not just the rich family, that, that's the joy of it. Um, virtually everybody will appear at some point in the notarial archive, yes. at least every, virtually every man, hopefully most of the women too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Amsterdam archives are digitizing their notarial archives at the speed of 15,000 scans a day. They hope to be completed in uh, seven years with dig digitizing and indexing. And then there will be uh, 20 million pages and uh, even more results. Um, so it will the, take some time, of course. So now, the, uh, the, the, the birth, position, marriage, and, and death record. Very interesting. Yes. We, um, <clears throat> in this, uh, in all these categories of indexes, we are missing the Ketterbot. They are not uh, indexed in the way that uh, all these others uh, have been indexed, but they are available through the archives of the Portuguese Jewish community. And again, this is an amazing source of, of, of data for uh, genealogy because uh, the Portuguese Jews were great record keepers and they noted everything down and you can find rich people in here, tax lists, poor peoples to, to uh, poor lists and uh, the only ones you need to worry about are the ones who are, who are too poor to pay taxes and too rich to get Sidaka or poor relief. The way to search in here. So sorry, Tony, is... if I can just um, jump in. Uh, Nisim in uh, Izmir is uh, waiting to. to okay. Uh, I bet all. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> the way to uh, search for the, the inventory of the Amsterdam of the Portuguese Jewish community is by putting in this number here or by searching for Portuguese here. Um, and we will also provide a link in our newsletter. If I click on search, <coughs> I will get one result. Each archive has a unique number and uh, the number for the Portuguese Israelite uh, community is 334. Clicking on here takes you directly to the archive. And what you see here is again the structure of the archive. And the first three numbers refer to the three earliest communities of Amsterdam. Bet Jacob, Neve Salon, Bet Israel. They work together in number four, 
in levying taxes, which were then used for poor relief, because that was a problem that the Amsterdam community had to contend with from the first. And they started to work together in the uh, community Talmud Torah, which uh, no one remembers. It's always known as uh, the Snowgull or the Portuguese Jewish community. Clicking he on here brings you deeper into the archive. And you see Stukken van Algemene Aard. And Stukken van Algemene Aard are very interesting because they uh, contain um, the most important uh, records uh, in which decisions were noted down. And they, these records have the name Askamot, and Askamot is uh, literally a decision. But uh, I'm, I showed you this uh, because I can tell you that now that in this register there are also tax lists. There are lists of people who pay Finta for the first time and thus became a member of the community. Well, Later on, there are also lists. Fee that, uh, a Finta is the fee that uh, paying members uh, pay. And then I'm afraid at the other end, you find people receiving Sadaka charity, which um, usually includes my family, of course. But... Hmm. So there's a lot here to, uh, uh, to scroll through and to read. You will have to get used to two things, old script and Portuguese, because most of these records are in Portuguese and, until and well in the Dutch. 19th century. Also, Dutch because, also Dutch, because the, Dutch, uh, yes. the, the, the website is in the Dutch language. Yes, uh, there are also Dutch records here, and as far as the, the government of Amsterdam uh, made decisions about the Portuguese Jews, and these were then noted down in, uh, in the Askamot in Dutch. And what you will also find here are some Hebrew words. Um, I've taken you deeper into the archive. There are all kinds of interesting things, but we go straight for administratie van de lidmaten. And here you find birth records, geboorte uh, records about geboorte, birth, uh, records about circumcision or besnijdenis, marriage, and death. That's one, three, one, two, three, four. Birth, circumcision, marriage, death. And then there are all kinds of other uh, uh, registers. Shall we, shall we have a quick look at the birth records? Yes. This is a birth record, and it's uh, the earliest one that has been preserved. And it starts in 1736, clicking on an image takes you into the image and uh, clicking on it again enlarges it automatically. You can use your scroll, uh, the scroll on your mouse to enlarge or uh, make it smaller. This one is in Dutch. Geboorte register der Portugese is Israeliten to Amsterdam. That's because it's a, a copy of the original one, which is lost. It was made in 1811 when the Dutch government requested all births, deaths, mar marriage records from before that time, from churches, from synagogues, from everyone, from the Portuguese Jews, they got this. It says here, geboren zoon. Mordechai van Moses de Aguilar. Son, no, uh, born, son. Mordechai of Moses de Aguilar. Mordechai is the child, and Moses is the father. It has the date in normal time reckoning. 
and this goes uh, on for uh, 167 pages, as you can see here below. Here you can navigate. The, um, the Portuguese language records are both chronological like this, but they're also by um, first name, by given name of, uh, of, of the children, which can be a little mm -hmm. bit confusing sometimes. So you can navigate uh, page by page, you can navigate uh, by clicking on scan, scan overzicht, which shows you 10 pages at a time. And this is done for uh, faster scrolling. Clicking again on the page. You see that we are here in 1773. I'm going to admit a few one more person. Okay. Um, this is a chronological birth register, and this one are uh, indexed on the first name of the person born. So first you get all your Abrahams. And after that will be the errands. They will be on the next page. Now within the name Abraham, it's done chronologically. And just, just, just to throw in, if uh, for those people who are um, seeking Portuguese citizenship uh, through Sephardi ancestry, this, this is the sort of documents that they are, are looking for. Yes, um, these documents have been indexed and you find them also um, on the index page and unfortunately you find them under dope registers, registers of baptism. That's because there are two million uh, Christians in there and a few thousand Portuguese Jews. <clears throat> Uh, I will show you a few circumcision registers, which you find under number two here. As in, as in London, the circumcision records are incomplete because the, the, the Mohel, the, the man who did the circumcisions, owned these registers uh, themselves. And I think Amsterdam was uh, slightly more efficient than London in, in getting hold of uh, of the copies, but not uh, not all of them. Yes. Clicking through. Here's one such uh, uh, register and shows you uh, the name and the date, the seventh day. And this one, uh, uh, I think, this is, not is someone of 25 years old. So this is someone who just came in from the lands of Ardo Letria, from uh, Iberia, Spain Indo. or Portugal. Looks yeah. a bit like a Spanish name. Yeah. But he was uh, circumcised on the 7th of ER, and the year is up above somewhere. 25 years old. Oh, uh, that's a nice uh, result. Oh. And this tells you that this person uh, has just arrived in Amsterdam and convert, reconverted to Judaism. Yeah. These circumcision registers have not been indexed. So you will have to go through them one by one if you want to find your, uh, your ancestor. And there's no guarantee that he will be in there because so many of these records are lost. Some of them are mentioned on the burial cast that I mentioned earlier from Bet Chaim. But if a person did not die or uh, in Amsterdam or 
uh, his grave was lost or he had not did not have a gravestone then uh, there will be no burial card and then there will be no uh, record of the of the circumcisions of the children but if you're lucky they will be there that's one more reason these burial cards are very important shall we go on to uh, get to bot Yes, let, let's 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 do that. Um, pe people are telling me my my voice is is quite quiet. Can you hear me? Yes, it's okay. better now. Okay, great. Like I said, the Ketterbot in Amsterdam uh, starts circa sixteen seventy five, and. Uh, they are not indexed in the way that the uh, other indexes work. You have to scroll through them to find the Ket uh, Ketuba of your ancestor. And that's why Akavot is important because there you find the name, the names of the uh, couple. Uh, Akavot being the Dutch jury dot org website. Yes. yes. And uh, and the date. And with that date, you can uh, search more eff efficient uh, through these books. All of these books also have an index in the back or in front. And most of them are in Hebrew, but in this early period, they are also in Portuguese. Uh, shall I click on one? Uh, yeah, do, do, do that and then perhaps we can afterwards go to, to questions in case anyone uh, wants yes. to ask or add something. Oh, here's one Ketuba and it concerns Abraham Levi Bondia. And it will have at the top the names of his father. It will have the name of his bride. It will have the name of the father of the bride and it will indicate of the fa if the fathers are alive. The, the, the Hebrew script is, is quite difficult. In my experience, normally somewhere on the third or fourth line, you will, uh, you will find the, uh, the names. I think it's probably also worth adding that if the, the Ketubah is uh, signed in the Roman alphabet, that will often suggest that the, if it's an early Ketubah, that the groom has come from uh, Spain or Portugal. If it's signed in Hebrew, it may mean that they've come from uh, Morocco or, or, or somewhere else in, in North Africa. Yes. And these uh, Moroccan uh, signatures can be very fanciful and very beautiful. Um, I've enlarged one here. In this case, it's not the groom. It's the the signature of the, uh, the rabbi who, uh, who actually wrote this Ketabot. And he wrote two of them. One went to the couple, they took it with them, and um, over the years, many of those got lost. But the synagogue kept the copy. And, and I think it's, one, it's worth adding, yes, that, that synagogues do, do keep copies for the... Uh, the Beth Din, in case, you know, God forbid, there should be a, a divorce or some question over yes. whether the marriage yes. occurred. So in, in London, for example, all of the, uh, the Ketubot uh, still exist, uh, the synagogue copies. And, and, and something which our, our, our friend uh, Michael Wass has been uh, pioneering is if you can take the early signatures from uh, the, the Ketubot, you can sometimes cross-reference them with uh, signatures in Inquisition documents, because obviously in Amsterdam they will have a Hebrew first name, and in the in Spain and Portugal they will have a, a Christian uh, first name. And sometimes it's not always very clear, but you can sometimes see that it is the same signature. Um, and that's just one of the new ways that we're, we're starting to use the, uh, the different archives so we can cross-reference them. Exactly so. Um, to sum it up, um, there's a lot to find in the Amsterdam records, 
and there will be even more in the near future, in the next uh, seven years, with this great project of notarial archives. And also the Portuguese Jewish archives are under, under indexed. There, there are lots and lots and lots of lists of names that some people have looked at but which uh, tell you about um, how rich a person was, how poor he was, uh, where he came from, where he went. And uh, there are also records about um, uh, inter-community uh, strife, there were quarrels, there were uh, decisions to take about individuals. And what uh, the Portuguese Jewish archives also have is a, a large number of uh, estate dossiers. Someone died, left money, the family called and went to the synagogue to let them sort it out. Or someone left money to the synagogue. Uh, or there was uh, some other reason why the synagogue uh, took control of the estate and okay, there I'm, I'm 200 sorry. of those. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, some, some people have been um, reporting problems with the sound. As, as, as we said, this is our, our first broadcast. We will try to um, get that right. We'll, if, if people perhaps want to type uh, any, any questions or, or points, perhaps that's the easiest way of proceeding. Um, whilst, whilst we're doing that, um, next week we are going to take our first look at uh, the Inquisition and we're in particular going to look at the uh, 1680 uh, Madrid Auto de Fe, which was the last uh, of, of the very grand uh, Auto de Fe. Um, and we shall also, uh, as, as Tom mentioned, and hopefully people are already signed up, be producing a, 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 an occasional newsletter which will have um, all of the, um, the links in here. Uh, Monique, Monique is asking, when, when, when did the record stop being written in Portuguese? It depends on which part of the archives we are talking about, but the, the, the decision books, the Eskimot of the Mahamat started to be written in Dutch in midway 19th century. And uh, some other parts of the archives are a bit earlier or later. But somewhere in the 19th century, um, with the emancipation of the Jews and the pressure to integrate into the uh, general Dutch community meant that Portuguese Jews also felt pressure to communicate in Dutch with their members. I, I, I think that's, that's actually the same in, in London around sort of 1840, especially with the, uh, the rise of the reform movement. Um, documents started to be written in, uh, in English, Al although sermons had continued to be uh, given in, in Portuguese way after most of the congregation could, could not even speak the language. Um, does, does anyone else have any other um, questions or, or, or points? Yes, please. Oh, yes, please. A voice. Speak. Hi, my name is Uri. I'm from Izmir Project. And in Izmir, uh, there was a very big Portuguese Jewish community. There, was, there is even a synagogue that we renovated recently by the name of Portugal. And I'm interested if there are any records of connections and relations between the Portuguese Jewish community in Amsterdam and in Izmir. Is there, is there any records for this? Uh, yes, there are. Um, Izmir um, is in an area where earthquakes are very uh, uh, frequent. Yeah. And it happened in the past that uh, synagogues in Izmir got uh, damaged. And then the community sent re representatives throughout the, the Western world and the Eastern world to collect money for this. And they also showed up in Amsterdam. I believe I posted about one of those um, 
on the Sephardic Diaspora group, Facebook group. So you may find it there or post your question again there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Pat Patrick is, is, is saying that it seems that 334, which is obviously the uh, Portuguese archive, and 5001 are the most useful databases in the Amsterdam archives. I mean, are, are there any other ones that uh, you think deserve? Uh, yes, uh, 5075 takes you to the Amsterdam notarial archives yeah. directly. What we saw were the indexes, and there are 1.6 million pages in those indexes. But if you go directly to the archives, there are seven and a half million pages. That means that there are um, just about six million pages which haven't been indexed yet. And the thing that you have to look next for is if there is a notary that has a lot of uh, Portuguese Jewish clients, yeah. and there are a number of them, then you can start looking at registers and look in the back or in, up front of those registers, and there will be often an index, often on given name. So that's a difficulty, um, but some I uh, also have an index on uh, on the last name that makes it uh, a bit more easier. Okay, Dave, Dave, Dave so, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry to jump in. It's, it's, it's a question that really interests me. Um, Dave, David is asking that where, where would, should one look for despacho lists uh, from 1640 to 1680? Despachos, if, if people don't know, are, are, are people who are essentially being funded to uh, move on to some other place. Um, from 1640 to 1663, I would say you have to look in financial registers. Yes. And uh, after 1663, there are the so-called Livro Longos. They are called that because of their shape. They are long and not very broad. And there are pages in them which have maybe 60 to 70 names on one page. And the numbers for those, and we can put those on the newsletter also, um, the numbers for those are 334 for the archive number, and from 215 for the Livro Longos. If you go to search the archives and click on inventories, it takes a little while. Well, well whilst, whilst Ton is doing that, there's um, another trick that doesn't tell you where, where, where they've gone, but it tells you when. Which is just yes. to look through the uh, the fin lists of uh, finta doors, the finta payers, if if they were wealthy, or the people re uh, receiving sadaka, if they were poorer, and when somebody has left and has not died, that uh, that obviously moves uh, suggests that they've moved on somewhere else, and that uh, uh, helped helped me in my own uh, my own family research. So it's archive number three three four and. Uh register 215 and you have you will have one result because that's a unique number click on it and it will open up again it takes some time but the amsterdam archives are working on that and it will be faster and faster in the future here we are This is the first one uh, of the Livro Longos. It's damaged, but it's very clearly uh, readable. And um, the despachos are one form of poor relief. There are others, so the despachos are not the only thing you find in here, but they are yearly. And in each year you have a few categories of poor who get 
support and uh, the, the ones that will get money, the, the ones who get matzos, matzos and the, the ones who get uh, peat to keep warm in winter. In London, it's, you, you would get coal. You would get coal, yeah. <coughs> That's a nice difference in, uh, in, in culture, I think. <laughs> And there are several other kinds of lists, but Despachos is one of them. So if you go through these books, you will see them and you will recognize them by, by uh, Despachos uh, Vaz de Vora. And also Despachos de Petitions, which means that these uh, are... Um, uh, individual uh, gifts upon uh, done upon request of a person in need. At, I must um, say, the, sorry, um, David. after you. <laughs> uh, I must stress that um, the Portuguese Jews did send people away, but they uh, sent no one away without money. And without a meal and without uh, a bed. Now, as we say now, bed and breakfast and, uh, and some money helped them along. And here are more of these Livro Longos and they continue until uh, 17, yeah, well, until 1815, but at a certain point, these despachos and other um, Categories were taken out and continued in an other uh, book. So um, I think, it, I, I mean, the, the, these Amsterdam archives are a complete treasure trove. And at some future date, we'll look more closely at uh, things like Dota, the, uh, the uh, support given to, to, to poor brides and the Ascomot and, 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 and so forth. Um, we, we've been going for an hour now. Um, if nobody else has any any more questions, shall we um, uh, shall we uh, call it a day? And we will be back here um, next week, hopefully with uh, better sound quality and uh, better better everything. Uh, looking at the uh, 1680 uh, Madrid Auto da Fe. If anybody um, is inclined to uh, support us, we've uh, set up a Patreon page. Uh, we've also, uh, of course, got uh, a newsletter. If you haven't signed up for that, please, uh, please do. And um, we'd be very grateful for any feedback anybody has. Um, obviously, it's the first time there's some uh, teething problems. Um, shall I um, leave uh, Ton to... Uh, to close, close matters. Yes. Um, thank you for watching, everyone. We hope you will be back next week. And we are also hoping that you will support us in one form or another. And uh, this will be an interesting series, I'm sure. See you all next time. Thank you. Can I you just, uh, thank you, Tom. Can I you. just bye -bye. say how can I just say how much I appreciate the work, Tom and David, you've both done. I found this last hour absolutely fascinating. Thank you. That's very kind. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree also. I found it fascinating. Thank you. Can we make thank some you. comments in the Zoom group chat? Will you get them if we write them down? Um, yeah. we're, we're going to close the meeting now, because, but uh, if, if you want to email us or talk to us later, you'd be really comment. Good. Okay, bye. All right, thank you very much indeed. Thank, All the thank best. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Closing the meeting. <laughs>